that one actually is something that we could look at more for someone with more severe cardiovascular issues or um, supporting healthier triglyceride levels. So vitamin D is important in not only what people typically think of bone health, but it's systemic for immunity, autoimmunity, um, the brain. There's so many connections between the two of them. We actually have formulas and like cod the royal, which naturally has vitamin A and D in there together because of the benefits of them uh, both being crucial fat soluble vitamins that we need. It's that still was going strong. Yes, Since it is. 1984. We're going on 37 years here, 38 years of this product yeah. being on the shelves. That's pretty incredible. Welcome everybody to episode 15 of the Healthy Habit Podcast. Our first time talking to Laura Sterling, who's a registered dietitian, nutritionist, certified nutritionist, and national educator for Carlson Labs. This might be the first time we've talked to Carlson Labs in, in several years, so I'm excited for this one. Uh, Laurel's worked in the natural products industry since 2000. Over the past years, Laurel's counseled hundreds of individuals, lectured at various corporations and events, written numerous articles and blogs, and can be heard on radio shows and podcasts like this one. Uh, Laurel has a genuine passion for educating, informing, and empowering the public through nutrition education. Laurel, welcome to the Healthy Habit Thank Podcast. You. How are we doing? Thank you. Doing wonderful. Thank you. So you're the nutritionist and educator here at Carlson Labs. Tell us a little bit about your journey and, and Carlson's history as a company. So um, my history, I grew up on a dairy farm actually in central New York and my family really didn't go out to eat much and we had a huge garden. So I was very fortunate to have that kind of an upbringing. My grandmother went to a chiropractor. So we had these little bottles. I never knew really what homeopathics were, but I was given them since I was young and I never really thought about it until I went to college and kind of got away from my healthier habits and my mom's great cooking, <laughs> as a lot of us struggle with. Yeah. Um, and so I also you add on the layers of stress, too, and I didn't know how to properly deal with that. And so um, I started finding myself having specific health issues and I didn't really think much about it. And, the, and then when I graduated, I didn't have a job where I had insurance. When I finally did go to the doctor, they said, wow, you need to have surgery tomorrow. It was that severe. Hmm. And I was only 23, maybe. And it wasn't anything that I had ever really thought. It really puts your mortality right in front of you at right. that point. And so I, I guess at that point, I didn't think too much of it and felt a little bit better, but it was about a year later, I found myself having another health issue where I was having to go to the doctor and have different surgeries. Mm -hmm. Then I started thinking as I was laying there in the hospital bed, I need to do something about this. And I really appreciate these people helping me. And I, I didn't know where I wanted to go from there, but I knew I wanted to get into some sort of health arena. So I actually started out with physical therapy and got into exercise physiology and um, nutrition science. And at the same time I was getting my master's degree, I was working at a local health food store. And thankfully I had people there that were guiding me in certain directions away from what could have potentially put me in um, uh, more pharmaceutical direction that I didn't want to go into. Right. So I, started searching on my own and listening to other people that came in and educated us in the store and found out that there were certain things that were helping me not only with stress but what I had dealt with and I mean that was my journey I just loved loved uh, everything that it did and I don't think that uh, for me specifically I mean pharmaceuticals have their place but I don't think for what I needed specifically that would have helped heal it would have just kind of taken care of symptoms mm -hmm. so 
that's kind of where I went with that. And like I said, I finished my master's and then I started working at the store and mm -hmm. seeing counsel, uh, seeing clients. Right. And she also had a radio show and we did a lot of community outreach and lecturing. So I, I did a ton of that and I stayed with counseling for a while, but I got a little burnt out. I think I, I, I more so enjoy uh, educating the masses, which this is right. great for, because a lot of people now post pandemic are turning towards these types of um, uh, platforms to right. learn more about. So this is my passion to spread that word. <laughs> Absolutely. That's amazing, Laurel. And so may, um, a lot of our customers and clients here, patients and over the years, they know about Carlson because of the cod liver oil. So tell us about how this all started. It's it's in the glass bottle. That's that's rare to find right. now. A supplement in glass. Tell us about right? this a little bit. <laughs> well, I the the company started back in 1965, and it was started by Susan Carlson, and it was prompted actually not by fish oil, but it was vitamin E with her father's oh, okay. journey. And yeah, it was he had some severe angina and her mom came across a book called vitamin E and heart health. And, um, they went to the shoe clinic, I believe that's in Canada and were prescribed a vitamin E and it really helped him. And the angina went away. He went back to his normal everyday activities. And then it was my understanding that they ran out and got vitamin E elsewhere and it wasn't helping. So they called the clinic and asked, what type did you get? And so apparently what they had found was unfortunately synthetic vitamin E, which we know that works at maybe 30% of what the natural forms work at. So that was his journey. And he said to her who Susan was, I think one of only the one woman in her pharmacy class at the time and said, hey, you know, this is something that we need to start selling. We sell that out of the pharmacy. So she said, before I knew it, I had hundreds of boxes and was selling this out of the pharmacy and kept them in my small little apartment. And so basically that's how Carlson started was this key e, um, vitamin E form. Right. So then after that, it was going more into antioxidants like her ACEs and ACEs plus zinc product that she developed. Um, and then it was John's passion with his Norwegian background, her husband's passion to look into the benefits of omega threes because it wasn't really big over in the States at this time. So he was looking into specific researchers and they were looking at what the Alaskans were eating um, and having the benefits. So uh, we were the one of the first companies to bring cod liver oil over to the United States and start selling it and start educating on it. And yes, that glass bottle, very important too. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. When I was working at the store, I never really saw the or paid attention to the writing on the bottle. And so that's pretty um, interesting because we have the exclusive rights to that. So it was based off of the um, pharmacists over in Norway. So, yeah. um, and the glass bottle is important. We know with oils in particular, you need to protect them from the light, heat, and air. Um, so you wouldn't want to have that in a plastic bottle because of what leaches from the plastic into the fats. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like soaking it all up, absorbing all the plastics and the chemicals inside the bottle. So tell us about the connection between omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D. What's the, how do those two work together? Well, I mean, they're both fats and fat soluble. They do have um, huge importance, those two, I think, as far as the research basing behind them. We're so crucially deficit in the United States between omega-3s and vitamin D. I mean, I live in central New York, probably the snowy capital of central of New York, and it's so D deficient. I, I saw tons of clients and some of them, the levels are supposed to be between 30 and 100 nanograms per milliliter. I've seen people with levels of 20 and one woman had a level of eight hmm. and they thought, because she was having all of these symptoms like MS sort of where she had tingling in her feet and arms 
that that that's what it was but then they started looking at her vitamin d level and once that was brought back up to where it should be which ideally if you look at the vitamin d council's research they're looking at closer to 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter is where you would like to have it so getting it up to that level takes some time just like with your omega-3s that's another thing it takes at least I would give it three months or so to start really building up into the cell membrane, into the body. So vitamin D is important in not only what people typically think of bone health, but it's systemic for immunity, autoimmunity, um, the brain. There's so many connections between the two of them. We actually have formulas in like Cod the Royal, which naturally has vitamin A and D in there together because of the benefits of them uh, both being crucial fats and fat soluble vitamins that we need. So we, we know that we're really deficit in the America, 95% of Americans don't eat enough, get enough of the omegas. Right. Um, they're and eating, that's, they're eating the wrong types of omegas. Exactly. The issue, right. They're eating right. too much of the sixes. Right. Right. And that's specifically, you're looking at, I'd say predominantly the corn and soy oils that we get from the fast foods, fried foods, prepared foods. Um, so we're heavy on that. I've heard different ratios of omega-6 to 3. Some have said 15 to 1 of omega-3s. Some have said 20 to 1. But we definitely should be more to like a 4 or 3 to 1. And we're not there at all. So we really need to get it in front of people's faces um, as far as consuming more omegas and the importance of omega-3s. Right. And we've talked on this on a previous episode where the ratio is supposed to be four to one, like four times of the omega sixes to the omega threes or one to one, pretty much equal. Right. Instead, right. What, like you said, we're seeing 20, 35, 45 plus times mm -hmm. the omega sixes compared to the omega one. So it's just way out of balance. So mm -hmm. can you help us differentiate then a product like between or sorry, elite omega three? and then the maximum omega-2000 through Carlson? Yeah, so these, well, our very first concentrate was the super omega-3. Um, and that one is the 1,200 milligrams. And that was important because we, we, at the time, it was in 1984 that we brought this product in, and we were looking at the research, American Heart Association, GOED's um, Global Organization of EPA and DHA, which they sort of mirror the recommendations based off of cardiovascular disease or a healthy adult. Um, and that was typically 500 milligrams of omegas to a thousand. But now we're seeing more so that's tipping towards based off research, two grams a day of omegas in a combination of EPA, DHA. So then we came into the elite omega-3, which is 1600 per um, two soft gels that the super omega would cover someone for the general healthy population, a start out sort of product. Whereas the elite and the maximum omega, the maximum has um, two grams of omegas per two soft gels. And those would go more towards someone that's looking at cardiovascular issues. Um, even at one soft gel of the elite that would cover 800 uh, milligrams of the omegas that is usually recommended for someone with blood pressure issues. Now the maximum at two grams and two soft gels, that again would be something where um, we haven't talked about it yet, but uh, the omega-3 index, and, and we can discuss that one, but that one actually is um, something that we could look at more for someone with more severe cardiovascular issues or um, supporting healthier triglyceride levels. Right. And that, that right there is the, our uh, liquid one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so if you're following along on YouTube here, you won't be able to see this on Spotify and the audio platforms there for the podcast, but I pulled up carlsonlabs.com, Carlson, like C-A-R-L-S-O-N labs.com. And we pulled up the Super Omega 3 product right here from their website. You said this is from 1984, Laurel? That was this one is the um, the liquid concentrated one. The one yeah. that was from 1984 was the um, right soft. Yeah, yes, that one right there, the soft gels. Yes, amazing. Right, it's that still was going 19... strong. 
Yes, it's it 1984. is. 1984. We're going on 37 years here, 38 years of this product yeah. being on the shelves. That's pretty incredible. Yes, yes. We have some phenomenal products. And like I said, we were we were originally um, founded with vitamin E, but we're actually more known now as vitamin D and, and fish oils. And cod liver oils were, I think, number one in North America with our cod liver oil, the liquid. So okay. these are just wonderful products yeah and per two soft gels here the super omega-3 we have vitamin e in there as well like you hinted at that's how it initially started as a company even back in the 60s right with the vitamin e right right and yeah. so that's combined with the norwegian fish oil why norwegian tell us about that a little bit um i mean the waters up there are very clean we have a facility actually there's a facility called um a bottling facility that we work along with another um, supplier is called Carlson Healthy Oils. So we like to um, use their specific products and, and fish that are found up there. And then um, as I've heard on other, other podcasts that people have talked about is that there are not a lot of suppliers. So we're, a lot of us are pulling from those few that are around and there are specific fish like the cod that are found off the coast of Norway and others like um, sardine, mackerel, the smaller ones and anchovies off the coast of Peru. So um, we have that facility up there where we bottle uh, the, the liquids and they are tested, they are nitrogen flushed um, it's, it's tested. There's three different third party testings that we use. One is IFOS, which is the international fish oil, um, standards, and they specifically test fish oils and they give a five-star rating and ours have consistently hit that on potency and purity and consistencies and, um, free of all different sorts of contaminants like PCB and lead and mercury, um, they also test for radiation after that whole Fukushima meltdown. They right. test for radiation too. So we test them before they're bottled. And once they're capped off, we test them with the third party tests as well. Another one, and you'll see those on our labels. The, the IFOS is a little emblem. And then we also have the, um, in a box, it's the American Oil and Chemist Society. And they are an independent FDA lab that tests for 28 plus different contaminants. So if people are concerned about mercury or purity, we really go to extreme lengths to make sure these are high quality, highly tested. And again, we have that nitrogen flush where the bottle is flushed first, then they put the oil in. Then at the top, you'll see it's not air, that's nitrogen. So the light heat and air is kept out. Once you open it, you will see that little bit of vitamin E and the antioxidant blend, which helps it because every time you're opening um, a liquid, you're exposing it to the light, heat, and air. So it would help protect it and extend the life and quality and stave off any oxidation, which we don't want to have in any oils. Right. Tell us about VFFO. And what is this? So that yeah, this is our very finest fish oil, um, a great seller, a little bit different than the cod. The cod um, has natural vitamin A and D in there, and it's 1,100 milligrams per teaspoon. Now, the very finest fish oil has 1,600 milligrams in one teaspoon. So you could even take half a teaspoon, and that would cover what you need. Um, some of these have higher amounts of EPA over DHA. This one specifically to um, just like your maximum omega, higher amounts of EPA over DHA, but they have both of a blend. And so this is a great one that would sort of um, look like the elite omega-3 in, in the liquid form. So um, one teaspoon a day would be all that you would need on that. And, right. and like I said, looking at the omega-3 index, which measures the amount of EPA and DHA in the red blood cell membrane, they were looking at getting to that 8 to 12%. And these products would get you upwards toward that. You definitely would hit those levels with the maximum soft gel that we have. That's the 2002. Um, so really important with the research they're looking at with the um, omega-3 index. Incredible. So what's keeping Carlson Labs going as a company? You know, 1965, we originated here. We're going on 60 years almost. Right. 
Unbelievable. Right. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, we are family owned still. So Susan Carlson's daughters have taken over um, and the quality and what we're looking for. We're, we're not this, um, you know, super flashy uh, with, with the latest of greatest of products, but we really like to keep that foundation okay. for people and, and really focus on family, family health, because again, that's how we started. And, and for me, way back I want to say in 2000 is the first time that I ever tried fish oil. And this was the very first company's one that I tried. I remember taking the, it was the very finest and I tried the liquid and I had never had any fish oil. Didn't grow up like with a Mediterranean diet where you're dipping oils ever. So I just was like, oh man, I'm going to be trying but it was phenomenal. We get taste awards all the time on all, all of our liquid fish oils um, so I stuck with the brand and I gave it to my animals. And when I was pregnant, I took it, continued it throughout um, my daughter to this day. She's 15. She's gone through taking either the liquids or we have a maximum Omega minis, which is great for anybody that has swallowing issues or kids that are starting out with swallowing because they're smaller um, or the elderly that have issues with swallowing, even larger soft gels. And so she takes those. I just line everything up in the morning. And um, I, I just think that we're an A to Z company, too. We, we're we not just what people are thinking of, of fish oils and vitamin D. We have amino acids and all sorts of different vitamins and powders and gummies now. So I think just keeping the high quality and um, that standard. And, and like you said, we're, we're really known when people say cod liver oil, that's the <laughs> one thing people think Carlson cod liver oil. <laughs> right. It's good to have something that gets the company's name on someone's radar. Right. Uh, right. So you mentioned you can actually do a, an index testing. You said of the Omega three, can you tell us real quick, a little bit more about that? That's important. Right. So um, we teamed up with Dr. William Harris of Omega Quant, and they have a bunch of kits. They started out with, based off of his research back in 2004, that he co-created a kit. And it's just an in-home test kit that you can do and you register it. You, you Basically, it's a finger stick and you put the blots on there, you register it, you mail it in and then you get the results back. And so he made this available in 2009. So we teamed up with them probably three years ago and started out with this Omega um, 3 test kit. And then we brought into it the mom's DHA test kit, which measures the amount of um, the DHA specifically where you want to have it at least 5% because they were seeing with uh, higher amounts of DHA for mom, there's less likely preterm early births, right. which we know that we have to have the kids in there as long as we can because we want you know healthy lungs and brain and healthy moms as well. And when they're breastfeeding, they need to continue to supply that for the growing brains and nervous system and eyes. Um, so the omega-3 test kit like I said, measures the amount of EPA and DHA in the red blood cell membrane. So they were finding based off of looking at cardiovascular health and sudden cardiac death. They also now are looking at Alzheimer's dementia and other um, brain issues with making sure that people are at that eight to 12%, but predominantly they saw America, most of it were at 4%. And with sudden cardiac death, they saw close to like 90 to 100% death with those people that had 4% or below. Wow. Yeah. That's, so we, that's powerful. So you do it, you do, you, you do an at home test kit, ship right. it out. They give you a report of where that omega 3 is in the red blood cells. Because right. that's where the research is showing the blood pressure regulation benefits, the preventing mortality. And it's only 8 to 12%. It's not like you have to be up at 70%, right? So you right. don't need massive right. amounts of fish oil. You take a daily exactly. little small amount to get that specific amount of fat up. Is that right? Yes. Wow. And people typically, like we were saying, don't eat enough. And, and even if you just go into the pregnant moms too, and not wanting to go towards fish because of specific reasons that, you know, that they talk about not having fish when you're pregnant. So 
Um, or even people talking about the contaminants, not wanting to have fish or the specific fish we talk about, the fatty fish that we yeah. need to get the right amount of the omegas from. So that's where you need to make sure that you're taking omega-3s because, again, it does everything in the body. Our our cells, um, you, you can't talk about anything without mm. omega-3s impacting something with the eyes and the brain and the immunity and the skin everywhere in the body. So this is something that should be taken long term, not just a little here or there once in a while, right. because it will dip just like vitamin D. You take that, it takes about three months or so for these all to get in to the cell membranes and to rise up. Sure. If you stop either D or omegas, they start to be utilized by the body and dip back down. So your protection is not going to stay there unless you continue taking these. So testing the levels, they usually recommend every four to six months to okay. see where you're at. And um, there's little, even if you go to, you get the report back and you go to Omega Quant, they'll have these calculators that will tell you, here's where your level is. This is where you want to get to. It'll recommend how much to to hopefully get you to yeah. the D levels or the um, omega-3 index level. This was a perfect inaugural episode here with Carlson Laboratories for episode number 15 of the Healthy Habit Podcast. We had Laurel Sterling with us, nutritionist and educator there at Carlson Labs. And again, you can head over to carlsonlabs.com and research all the products that we're discussing here with Laurel. Thank you, Laurel, for your time. Thank you. This was wonderful. Thanks for having me. 